Despite their best efforts then, Inter still just about in the title race, remaining eight points off Juve at the top of the table. Gab, how did they win that game? It was remarkable because, look, they're playing Parma. Um, Parma are a team that, that sit deep, put seven people uh, almost on the goal line and then attack with three guys. And, you know, they get their goal. They, 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 they take the lead. And it's it's all uphill for Inter. There, there, there's no there's no Brozovic, there's no Sainci. Uh, Eriksson's having an off day, so there's no creativity in the middle of the park, and um, and, and they basically won this through through really sheer uh, determination. You know, punching in a goal, and then and then later on somehow Bastoni finding, even though he's like six foot five, finding himself miraculously uh, uh, invisible, like sort of a, an uncloaking Romulan bird of prey at the far post. And, uh, and, he, and he heads in um, uh, Victor Moses' little spin move. But, um, you know, it's one of those things where you, where, where you praise their grit and whatnot, but, um, you know, not a performance to write home about. And you could say the same about what we saw 24 hours earlier as well in the Lazio game. Similar, coming from behind. Incredibly dodgy penalty in that match that keeps them just about as well in the title race. Yeah, a very dubious penalty there uh, from, uh, from Felipe Caicedo with the whole foot drag and, uh, and everything against the Fiorentina side who I thought played well. Scored a phenomenal goal um, with, uh, uh, with Frank Ribéry early on. But, you know... I think with Lazio, it's more in Lazio's DNA to have to have games like these where, you know, they, they pounce on, a, on an opposing mistake. They create something. They're very, very resilient. Um, I think what Simone Inzaghi was looking for was, was a reaction after their, uh, their incredible defeat against uh, Atalanta in midweek. And, and he got that, and he got the points, and they moved forward. Um, but, uh, but you're right. I mean, look, whether it's the lockdown, whether... Um, it's, 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 it's the lack of, uh, of fans, whether it was all the time off, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing, it's like Serie A's like bizarro world right now, a ton <laughs> of goals being scored and we're getting a lot of results like these. Away from the title race, Gav, a little bit of light maybe at the end of the tunnel for Milan fans. Uh, yeah, look, this is huge. Milan and Roma, you're talking about, you know, two teams that, that are competing for the same prize. Well, actually Roma still maybe hoping for a top four finish. Uh, but, you know, for Milan to take points off them, it's, it's the, you can call it a Europa League six-pointer from, from their perspective. Um, I think Roma kind of made this tough on themselves as the game wore on. Uh, but Milan, I thought, fully deserving in the end. Uh, that goal from, uh, from Ante Rebic uh, was one of those goals where you look at all the pinball action uh, in the box leading up to the goal. It's one of those where, you know, you tell yourself if this doesn't go in, you know, this is when heads drop, this is when you get demoralized, and this is when maybe you start thinking, well, maybe the draw isn't a terrible uh, result. Instead, uh, Rebic eventually punching it in, and, um, and it's a huge three points, and it's very important because uh, like financially for Milan to get in the Europa League is very important, both in attracting uh, new commercial sponsorship and commercial deals, um, but also uh, simply giving uh, their new coach next year, if they do get a new coach, and if it is Ralph Rangnick, really something something tangible to work with. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.